he comes, here he comes, there's the trumpet, there's the drum, here he comes, hop along Cassidy, here he What's all the celebrating about, Peg Leg? Oh, you'd be celebrating too if you just found what you've been looking for all your life. <laughs> hey, take a look at this. <laughs> ah, Peg, you old buzzard, what's all the shooting about? <laughs> hey, take a look at this, or you can. <laughs> hey, that's about the richest rock I've ever seen. Well, that's real high grade. Look here. I guess that shooting didn't mean much. Everything seems to be quiet. <laughs> ah, peg leg, the old buzzard. I thought it was somebody looking for trouble. <laughs> Shake, Saunders. Well, sir, I finally located a claim that's going to make me a millionaire. What do you think of that? Congratulations. <laughs> this means that your days of worry are over. Yep, and yours too. We're partners in this deal, you and me, share and share alike. I couldn't let you do that. Not after you worked so hard for it. Hey, listen, where would I have been all this time if you hadn't a grub stake me? No, sir, we're partners and that goes. You call that good ore? Yeah, I've used better rock than that to throw it in my burrows. Well, if it ain't old Windy Holiday. Say, how come a top cow hand like you's riding herd on a printing press? Um, why, uh, you see, uh, why are none of your darn business? Wendy was unfortunate enough to have his outfit stolen. He's just helping me out until he gets another one together. Yeah. Mr. Saunders needs a bodyguard in this town. Where did you locate this claim? I ain't telling nobody. Leastwise, not till I go to the county seat and file on the claim proper. I don't want the whereabouts spread around. You know, uh, claims has been jumped before. Are you trying to send away that I'm a claim jumper? Why, for two cents, I... Uh, uh, uh. Pegleg wasn't insinuating. I wouldn't linger in town too long if I were you. Better protect your claim right away. That's just what I'm aiming to do. Well, see you in a couple of days, partner. Windy! 
Don't let that printing press throw you. If he wasn't a friend of yours, I'd pin his ears back. Wendy, you displayed unusual forbearance. Yeah. You're darn tootin'. No, I ain't going to. Oh. So you want a drink, huh? Now, that's fine now, ain't it? Here I am exercising all my willpower and fortitude, and what do you do? <laughs> you going to stop right in front of a place like this. It's disgusting, that's what it is. Fine partners you turned out to be. Go ahead and drink. See if I kill Stick your ears in it. You can drink all your mind of it. You ain't gonna force me to do none. Oh, oh excuse me. Hmm. I'll buy just one more drink, then I'm gone. Oh, he said that for the last three hours. I'd like to have a look at your claim, Peg Leg. I might buy in with you. Oh, I want to see it. Well, I ain't telling nobody where it is until I have filed on it. Not even my mother. Shut him up again. It's no use, Lily. I can't find out a thing. The old mule's too stubborn to talk. Sometimes a mule can be coaxed when he can't be driven. Hello, Pegleg. What did you say? Well, I didn't say anything, Pegleg. There goes Lily, going to work. Oh, hello, Miss Lily. I'm awfully happy to hear of your good luck, Pegleg. <laughs> Huh? Oh, just have a drink on. Not unless I can buy you one first. Sandy, bring out my private bottle. Yeah, get that private bottle. Well, he might just as well give up his mind right now and get it over with. <laughs> I hope you've been smart enough to protect your claim in every way, Pigley. You bet your life I have. Are you sure the location papers are made out properly? You know the description and all? Everything is read out right and proper, all ready to file. I always had an idea you could look out for yourself. <laughs> I sure can. But you must be careful. Don't let anyone know where your mine is located until after you file. Don't worry, Miss Lily. The location papers are staying right here until after I get to the county seat. Here's to your mind, Peg Leg. Here's to yours. He's carrying his location map and his money belt. Wouldn't it be too bad if he had an accident and lost those papers before he'd had a chance to file them? Yes, wouldn't it? I'll tell Blackie. Well, Bob, there wasn't no sign of his location map on him when they found the body. And it's my guess he didn't die accidental, neither. I'm betting he was hit from behind. I'm sure it was no accident. Poor Peg Leg was murdered in cold blood. I'm going to write an editorial right now that'll rouse this town to action. It's time someone did something. Until now, the time has come when the decent citizens of the town of Mesa Grande must band together to stamp out the vicious, lawless element that's a blot on our community. 
So says the editor. <laughs> Never mind what else he says, Blackie. If he's so keen on putting law and order into effect, why not elect him town marshal? You've had the job long enough. What <laughs> <laughs> Lily said? You all heard what Lily said. All those in favor, say aye. <laughs> the election is unanimous. <laughs> Let's go and... Pin a badge on the new marshal. What is it, Wendy? It's a bunch of my silver slipper. They're coming this way. They must have objected to my last editorial. Oh, eh? Well, if it's gunplay they're looking for, they're sure going to get it. Put up your gun, Wendy. They'd better let me handle this situation. Gentlemen, what can I do for you? Mr. Saunders, since you appointed yourself chief spokesman for law and order in our fair community, we decided to let you be the law, if any. You are hereby appointed the town marshal. This wasn't your idea, was it, Clavering? And what if it wasn't? I thought not. It's far too subtle for your intelligence. Very well. Since you've given me the authority, you can tell your boss... Well, now. Well, now. Well, then, you keep Lily's name out of it. <laughs> As I was saying, you tell your boss that law and order shall be brought to Mesa Grande. If you're figuring on importing outside help, you better tell them to bring their own funeral expenses. We're getting kind of tired of taking up collections to bury deputies. <laughs> I have work to do, gentlemen. Good day. And so are we. <laughs> Good day, so Mr. We. Marshall. Good day, sir. <laughs> Good day. Well, boys, we got a new marshal. Let's yeah. celebrate. You gonna let him bluff you? Deputize me and I'll clean him up for you. No, Wendy. We must wait. We must have help. Someone with brains as well as courage. Uh, you go bringing in some outsider and it'll be a plain case of suicide. Why, they wouldn't have a chance. I feel sure the man I have in mind can take care of himself. And who might this one-man army be? A gentleman by the name of Hopalong Cassidy. D Hoppy! Holy smoke, why didn't I think of him before? What? Do you know him? Know him? Why, Red heard with him for years. Learned him everything he knows. Ask him, he'll tell you. But I'm wondering whether he'd be willing to leave his home range. I think he will, if I ask. I feel sure that I won't have to ask him twice. Hop it. You getting tired, tenderfoot? Oh, it's not my feet. <laughs> Seems like we've been riding for a week. I'm beginning to wonder if there is such a place as Mesa Grande. Well, I didn't want you tagging along in the first place. Think I'm going to let the oldest member of the Cassidy family have all the fun and excitement? After spending all that money on you, putting you through a good school, you wind up back like an ordinary cowhand. Not that I, I don't appreciate what you've done, Bill, but before I settle down, I want to see a little excitement. I was told I'd get plenty of it stringing along with you. Never mind that soft soap. Come on. <laughs> you 
Hey, ten miles more to go. My stomach's beginning to wonder if I haven't got a grudge against it. I'm gonna stop and rest. All right. Hurt, man? That was a bad one. I'm all right now. Thanks to you, Mr. Cassidy's the name. No thanks necessary. I'll try to even things up some way if I can, Mr. Cassidy. Are you headed for Mesa Grande? I aim to stay there for a spell. Look me up. Just ask for Lily Marsh at the Crystal Slipper. Thanks. Think you can handle him all right now, ma'am? Oh, I'm sure I can. There you are. I hope to see a lot of you, Mr. Cassidy. You can't tell. Maybe you will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Trying to hog everything for yourself? Why didn't you keep her here long enough to introduce me? I figure I'll have enough trouble looking after you without you getting mixed up with ladies that wear diamonds as big as spur buckles. <laughs> I'm beginning to see where I might like Mesa Grandy after all. <laughs> Bill back in? Yeah, she's up the ranch. What a nerve as a dirty, thieving rougher. I'll fill him so full of holes he can use him for a gravel screen. What in the world's got into you? Uh, that's my saddle. That's the one that was stole the first night I got in town. Get away from that horse. Not till I get my saddle I want. It's mine and I can prove it. You ain't gonna prove nothing. I don't allow nobody fingering my things. Move. Go on! Wendy, go on back to the office. Well, it's only because you're asking. But when Cassidy comes, I'll get that dirty saddle-stealing polecat. So you're bringing in some sucker from the outside. Think it'll do any good? I'm sure it will. Going to clean us out, huh? Is that what you mean? Exactly. We're going to put a stop to the robbing and murdering. We're going to find out why it is that every prospector who makes a gold strike either loses his mind in a crooked gambling game or accidentally dies before he can file on his claim. Bear that in mind, gentlemen, and act accordingly.
I don't like those last remarks. Sounds like he's getting personal. Think I better teach him a little lesson? Yeah. He's talking altogether too much. Get the doctor, Jim. Yes, yes. No. Yes. Wonder what's happened. Come on. What's the matter here? What happened? Why, well, Saunders, the newspaper man got hurt. Saunders? Yes. Cassidy. Gosh, I'm glad to see you. I guess you got here just in time. Bob. I knew you'd come, Hoppy. Thanks. Buddy, get our saddle blankets. We'll carry him home. No use. I think they've finished me. <laughs> What do you mean? Who did it? I couldn't see. They came up in back of me. I don't think I'd be far wrong in saying it was the same ones who killed Peg Leg. I want you to do one thing for me. Anything you ask, Bob. I want you to help make this part of the country a fit place for people to live. I'll do my best, Bob. Look after Mary. <laughs> I can't help it, Hoppy. He, he gave me a lift when I... I needed it the most. I know how you feel, old timer. Yeah. He did about the same for me. Can't you uh, think of anyone that might have had a personal grudge against your father? Might have been any one of the crowd at the Crystal Slipper. They all disliked him. Did your father ever make a point of mentioning names lately? Yes. Yes, the time he wrote about Peg Lake Holden's death. He said it was strange that Lily Marsh should suddenly discover a rich gold mine the very next day. Who was this Peg Leg Holden? An old prospect whom Dad had grub staked for years. I suppose your father had an interest in anything that Holden might find. I believe they had some sort of an agreement to that effect. By cracky hoppy, I see what you're driving at. Peg Leg Holden showed up at the Crystal Slipper one night, roaring drunk. He was tossing a high grade ore around like he had all the gold in the world. Next day, he was found dead. His neck broke. 
There you are, Hoppy. Old Hawkshaw, the detective's got it all figured out for you. Ah, show up your lip, you young squirt. Or I take a couple of stitches in it for you. <laughs> oh, calm down, you old windbag, before you blow up. Buddy, that's enough. I guess that's all you can tell us, Miss Mary. Thanks for coming over. Buddy, see that Miss Mary gets home safe. Glad to. Maybe I'd better go along with him, Huffy. See if you don't get lost in the dark. <laughs> don't worry about me, Father Time. If I ever need a nursemaid, I won't go to the old people's home to find one. Come on. Brother or no brother, sooner or later, I'm going to pin that young whippersnapper's ears back for him. Oh, take it easy, old timer. He ain't like you and me. He's young. He's got a lot to learn. Maybe he will if we have a little patience with him. Come on, I want to go over to the crystal slipper and have a look at those guys. Hey! A new marshal's headed this way. Go on with your play. Keep up that music. Eddie, bring us a drink. smell something. Do you? Yeah. Must be a polecat. Or the law. Give me a drink, Sammy. Well, Mr. Newtown Marshal, I suppose you're here for the purpose of making Mesa Grande a decent place to live in, huh? That's a rough idea what I'm here for. Going to make a Sunday school picnic grounds out of the place, ain't you? Mightn't be a bad idea at that. Thanks for suggesting it. Go ahead and make your speech, mister, and get it over with. I ain't making no speeches, but I'm telling you something. From now on, this town ain't gonna be a healthy spot for them that don't watch their steps. Is that clear? Say, what's going on here? Hello, Mr. Cassidy. Howdy, ma'am. I was hoping you'd show up. Sandy, bring out a bottle of your best wine. This is the man who saved my life today. Here you are, the best in the house. I'm sorry to refuse, ma'am, but I'm not drinking. You didn't have that bad, John, when I saw you today. I didn't own it then. You're not going to let that piece of tin keep us from being friends, are you? That's entirely up to you. Then come on and drink with me. I said I wasn't drinking. If Lily says you're drinking, you're drinking. <laughs> All right, mister. But so long as I'm drinking, I'd rather have something I like. Give him whatever he wants, Sandy. Give me a tumbler of straight whiskey.
You must have a cast iron stomach. Here's how. Folks that get careless with guns ain't got no right carrying them. Wendy, put that in the jail safe. And the next time you or anybody else starts any gunplay in this town, you'll find yourselves cooling off in jail. I figure you all know how I stand on things by now. If anybody's got any objections, they can take it up with me personally. I aim to be around for some time. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Say, look at Lily. She don't know whether to kiss the new marshal or kill him. I wish I had my choice. Put it away. What's the move with you, anyhow? Why, well, there used to be a time when both of your guns would be out talking before you'd been in a place like that two minutes. <laughs> I wasn't wearing a badge then. Now things have got to be done legal-like. I ain't doing no shooting unless I have to. Hey. Where you headed, kid? In to have some fun. That's one place you're staying out of. Oh, Hop, are you going to begrudge me a little excitement? I got an idea you'll find plenty of it around here without even looking for it. Come on. So the tough boy's going out to get the marshal. Is that the idea? Since when have you started doing things without being told? Better walk softly, Bob. I couldn't afford to lose anybody as valuable as you are. I'll take care of Mr. Cassidy myself. I'm not blind. I know what's happened. You've gone soft on this Cassidy because he saved your life. My, but you're smart. Did you figure that out all by yourself? Yes. And what's more, That's enough I... out of you. You were nothing but a cheap tin horn till I brought you here from Chicago and made something out of you. And remember this. I'm still boss. Yes, I know, Lily. But if we don't get this, Cassidy, he'll get us. It means our necks or his. And remember, you're in just as deep as the rest of us. Do you have to tell me all that? Don't you worry. I've kept this out of hot water so far, and Mr. Cassidy, or no Mr. Cassidy, I'll go right on doing it. We heard about you, Mr. Cassidy. And we're willing to do anything you ask. Thanks. I just wanted to know if the decent folks in the neighborhood of Mesa Grande is willing to back me up. Anything you say. Say, how about starting right now? I'll let you know when we're ready. Might not be so long coming at that. Meanwhile, spread the news around the rest of your friends, will you? Sure will, Marshal. No mean Cassidy's trying to find out if you decent folks is with us and cleaning up Mesa Grande. Well, I don't know if we've got any right mingling in town affairs. All right. If you want to go on tolerating tin horn gamblers that carry six aces in their decks, that's your business. Tell the marshal I'll back him up. He ain't going to ring in no codex on me. These wise not anymore. Darn <laughs> tootin'.
Come on, get on your feet. Leave it alone. You're under arrest. What for? You guess. I got a right to shoot at anybody that comes around that curse or slip of mine. And I got a right to arrest anybody that shoots from ambush. You ain't got no jurisdiction outside of the city limits of Mesa Grande. There ain't nothing to keep me from hurting you into the city limits and arresting you there. Get on your horse. Who's he shooting at, you or me? Looked to me like it was you. Tag nab his ornery hide. I got a half a notion to take the law in my own hands. In spite of my uh, official position. Well, I can't say it. I'm more than half flame you, Wendy. But we better keep him alive. We might learn something about that mine of lilies. Cassidy's arrested Dugan. He's got him locked up in the jail. What do you arrest him for? For taking a shot at Wendy. The old fool was riding near the mine. Dugan's none too bright. If he were questioned about the mine, he might accidentally let something drop. Wouldn't it be too bad if something happened to him before he had a chance to talk? Yeah, wouldn't it? I'll tell Blackie. Gosh, Hoppy, I thought somebody took a shot at you. How did it happen? Looks like somebody didn't want him to do any talking. How much longer are you going to let this drag on, Lily? Now Cassidy's getting the ranchers lined up against us. Are you just finding that out? I knew it yesterday. Well, what are you going to do about it? Sit back and wait until we've all got ropes around our necks? Are you ready to go out and meet Mr. Cassidy face to face with a gun in your hand? Why, it would be easy if you just got him up here. He's too smart to walk into anything like that. But if he ever gets careless... Who's there? Me, ma'am. Cassidy. Get out. I'll take care of this. Come in, Mr. Cassidy. I'll see you later, Bob. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Nice place you got here, ma'am. I'm glad you like it. Is this a business call, Mr. Cassidy, or social? Well, it happens to be business. See, a prisoner of mine was killed yesterday, and I figured you might be able to help me find out who did it. Now, how would I be able to help you, Mr. Cassidy? Well, since he was working for you, I thought you might know somebody that held a grudge against him. Sorry, Mr. Cassidy. I don't know any more about it than you do. There's no harm in asking. It's all right with me. Nice piece of rock. From your mind? That's some of the first ore we took out of the crystal slipper. There's a lot of gold in that mine, Mr. Cassidy. More than enough for one. You're lucky. If I could find someone I liked, someone who had brains and nerve to run that mine for me, he'd be lucky too. I'd make him rich in no time. You mean, uh... I couldn't have made it much plainer, could I? Sorry, ma'am, I'm not interested. I kind of like my present job. You don't like me, do you? 
Well, I can't say I exactly dislike you. It's just the business you're in and the folks you string along with. I suppose you think I should give everything up, run away from it all. Never thought of it. But it mightn't be a bad idea at that. And if I don't run away? I don't like making war on women, but I got a job to do. It seems that you and me are lined up on opposite sides. Then I'm afraid it is war between us, Mr. Cassidy. I hope it can be a fair fight. Good luck, Mr. Cassidy. May the best man win. Thanks. I, um, we should think things over, ma'am. Just for your own sake. right when I figured you'd gone soft on him. What are you talking about? Cassidy. I just saw him walking out. You see everything, don't you, Bob? Well, why didn't you get him while you had the chance? You wouldn't understand if I told you. And why not? Because you're not a woman. Yes, I get it. You're letting Cassidy make suckers out of all of us because you've fallen for him. Even if I have, I'm no more anxious than you are to spend the rest of my life in jail. We'll get rid of Mr. Cassidy. We'll have to. Somehow I'm full enough to almost wish it could be a fair fight. Hey, Benson. Yes, Marshal. Here's a piece of ore from the Crystal Slipper Mine. I want you to compare it with that ore peg leg holdings you got in there. I'll check up on it right away. Keep it quiet. Well, hello. I thought you and Buddy were going riding. Well, I'm afraid Buddy feels there are other things more important than going riding. Why, if I was Buddy's age, I couldn't think of anything more important than going riding with you. Did he say what this business was that took him away so sudden? He didn't have to say. I've been looking for you, Mr. Cassidy. Please don't think I'm a tattletale, but I'm afraid Buddy's going to get into trouble. Well, where is he? What's he doing? Gambling. In there? Now, don't you worry about it. We'll soon put a stop to that. Thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Lily or no Lily? We're going to take matters into our own hands. You lay for Cassidy. And the first chance you get, let him have it. Can't happen too soon to suit me. All right, they're all set. At all, all right, sir, they're yours. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on. Come on. Seven left. That's two and a one. You lose. How about taking my IOU for some more chips? Never mind the IOU. Come on, buddy, we're getting out of here. Oh, Hoppy, I'm just getting lucky. A little while longer and I'll be even. I told you I wanted you to stay out of here and it still goes. What's for your chance, Blackie? I'm going to start things moving. You better run on, son. Your nursemaid's liable to get mad and spank you if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no one's playing nursemaid to me. I'm over 21 and you and no one else is going to treat me like a baby. Give me some more chips and I'll give you an I.O.U. Come on, get going. Keep your hands off me. You've got no right coming in this way, starting trouble. Don't you start anything unless you can back it up. I'm backing him up, Mr. Marshall. I'll give you ten minutes to get out of town and stay out. Come on. Come on. 
Come on, kid. You're not going to get away with humiliating me in front of all these people, Mr. Cassidy. You and I are quits. Where are you going? None of your business. Oh, yes, it is. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to let you cool off in jail for a while. Well, I guess there's no use resisting, Mr. Marshall, as long as you're wearing that tin badge. When they get Buddy's things together, I'm shipping him home. Oh, go easy on him, Hoppy. He ain't like you and me. He's just a kid. He'll be all right if we have a little patience with him. I don't know. He might be pretty hard to handle. Well, so was you when you was his age. Times when I felt like taking a poke at you myself. You just leave him to me. I'll bring him around all right. Kind of like him a little bit yourself, don't you? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> He's Cassidy, ain't he? <laughs> uh, you better leave him in there. Might do him good. And if he's hungry, get him something to eat. <laughs> that got you right twixt the eyes. Oh, Wendy, may I come in? Oh, yeah, yeah, come right in, come right in. For me? Oh, no, that's for Betty. I've just heard he's been locked up. Well, too bad, Miss Mary, but they ain't nobody allowed to see the prisoner. But I'll give it to him. Thanks, Wendy. Try squaring yourself with Hoppy. Hmm? What for? It was he who humiliated me? Certainly he humiliated. Well, it's your own fault, is it? Brother or no brother, you learn it ain't in the cards to shoot off your lip to hop along Cassidy. Well, he did it just to show off. Why, you dag nabbed ignorant yearling. He done it to keep you out of trouble. Why, if anything had happened to you, he'd never forgive himself. He's got a mighty funny way of showing his affection. Well, maybe he has, according to your light. But if you live long enough, you learn that he thinks more of you than anything in the whole world. Why, I guess maybe I was a little out of line with him, Wendy. Yeah. I'm beginning to see things more clearly. Yeah. Maybe that humility... Uh, well, maybe he done you some good after all. <laughs> 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 Marshal. Yeah? I checked on these two pieces of ore, and I say they both came from the same vein. Would you be willing to swear to that in the court of law? Why, of course. And if need be, I could find ten other assayers that would back up my statement. I expect to be needing your testimony right soon. Thanks. Good night, Marshal. Hey, that reminds me. How about feeding the horses? Oh, forgot all about it. Take care of it right away, Hoppy. Hey, Wendy, come here, will you? What do you want? Well, I wanted a drink of water, but never mind bothering. Just get it yourself. Wendy just told me a couple of things I never learned in school, Hoppy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, forget about it, kid. <laughs> Who 
What's the idea? Evidence. Them two little pieces of rock might turn the trick for us, son. Looks like you're going to have a wholesale lot of lynchings on your hands. Oh, no, we're not. Any prisoners we get are going to be taken right over to the county seat and get a fair trial by an honest jury. Hey, Wendy, better get them guns clean, too. Hey, Pete, think you can put some links in these for me? Sure can. Expect to be using them soon, Marshal? Before that day is over. Fix it right away for you, Marshal. Satan ready, Pete? Yeah, that shoe will stay on this time, I think. Thanks. If you weren't so busy enforcing law and order here in town, Mr. Cassidy, I'd invite you to ride out to my ranch with me. As long as you're headed out of town, it might be wise to keep right on going. Are you advising or ordering? Advising? I told you I didn't like the idea of making war on women. Help me up, please. I'm not interested in either your advice or your orders. Lily Marsh never runs away from anything. Or anybody. Besides, if I were to leave, who'd look after you? Buck, I'm taking things over. What's the idea? Well, since Blackie's run out on us, it looks like Billy's getting ready to double-cross us with the marshal. Are you going to back me up? I never liked the idea of taking orders from women. That's all I wanted to know. Leave that money alone. Take your hands off those chips. I won't. I saw you there from the bottom. What's the matter, you? Can't you stand losing a little money without crying about it? Yes, but I won't stand for having it stolen. You can't get away with that kind of talking here. Well, you cut those chips and get away with it. This town's going to wake up someday, and you tin horns are going to find yourselves with ropes around your necks. Well, it won't be you who does it. Dark draw, Clavin. Come here. I told you the next time a man got careless handling a firearm, he'd be thrown in jail. Move. Come on. Cassidy's got Claiborne. I've been waiting for this chance for a long time. Me too. Charlie, get a rope. Boys, this is only the start. Boy, let's take this job off the marshal's hand. I knew they'd get it made if we waited long enough. Uh, we'll take care of for you, Cassidy. What do you aim to do with that? Go on and string him up. The skunk shot my son in the back. If you want to file any charges against him, he'll be held for trial. We ain't going to wait for no trial. We're taking matters into our own hands. This rat killed my buddy. Listen, men. You wanted law and order in this town, and you're going to get it. Now go on about your business. We don't like going against you, Marshal. But we're taking care of this little matter. If you won't give up your prisoner, we'll have to take him. Hanging's too good for him. Come on, let's take him. I'm warning you. You try to take this prisoner, you're going to have to get me first. Don't be a fool, Cassidy. You can't stand off the whole town alone. Who says he has to do it alone? Come on there. Open up. He said open up, didn't he? Hoppy? Yeah? Where do you keep the shells of these guns? You mean you was running a bluff? Well, I had to. Couldn't find the shells. <laughs> You'll do all right. You're just plain yellow. Cassidy told you to run and you ran. Yeah, he had to drop on me. I can't use anybody who lets himself be run out. We're through. Oh, no. No, we're not. 
What about my share in the mine and everything else? Looks like the marshal's going to keep you from collecting. That's what you think. What are you going to do about it? I'm coming in tonight. Cassidy or nobody else is going to run me out of town. I wish I could believe you had the nerve. Watch and see. Too bad they put a wind in a jail like that. I guess you'll be safe, though. I don't reckon they'll try to stop you from talking like they did Dugan. Cassidy! Don't leave me here! They'll... They'll what? Nothing. If you got something to say, go on and say it. I've got nothing to say. Too bad Lily Marsh didn't feel the same way about things. What did that dirty double cross I tell you? I kind of gathered that you were on the killing of Peg Leg Holden and Bob Saunders. She's lying. She's just trying to get rid of me. Well, maybe so. Well, I hope the news don't get around. The town might decide to go on with that necktie party. She's lying, I tell you. It wasn't me who killed Saunders and Holden. It was Blackie. You promise you wouldn't let him string me up. Don't let him get me, Cassidy. Too bad we don't know where Big Blackie's hiding out. If they had him to chase after, they might forget about you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you where he is. The hideouts. I'm at the crystal slip of mine. Hey, Wendy, you missed all the fun. Eh? Yeah. What happened? Well, we're ready to start the roundup. Wendy, you better spread the word around to the ranchers to head for town. You're darn tootin'. <laughs> Let's head to the mine. If they follow us up there, we'll give them some of their own poison. The rest of us will ride out the Crystal Slipper Mine. Better get some shells. Get going. Hey, put that gun up, kid. You don't belong in this kind of a ruckus. You're gonna do just what I tell you. You're sticking right here. <laughs> That's right. Think we're gonna have time to ride a herd on a fat-headed yearling like you? <laughs> Since it's you who's giving orders, Methuselah, guess I'll have to obey. <laughs> Cassidy and we'll rush them. Oh, it'll cost us too many men to go in head on. You stay down here. Wendy and me will do a little scouting around. We might be able to get in from the back.
Take him out there and tie him up. Get the rope. Put on his arms. What do you aim to do with me? Make that brother of yours come to time. Come on, get going. Get down in there. Are you surrendering? Surrendering nothing. Tell Cassidy to call off his men and give us 24 hours start. Or he can kiss his baby brother goodbye. Tell Hoppy for me that if he backs off now, he's no Cassidy. You better do what Buck says, Hoppy. I got to do what the kid says. Even if we pulled out now, I wouldn't trust Buck. You better get back. I'm going up alone. Hmm. Not as long as I can crawl after you, I want. We can't let him get away with that. Tell Cassidy has got just two minutes left to decide. Give me a knife. Well, there goes one Cassidy we don't have to worry about. Take him up. All right, get the guns, Wendy. Give me that gun. Come on, Willie. Come on, get over here. All of you. Keep them covered, Wendy. Look, Cassidy's got him. You all right, kid? Yeah, I <laughs> guess so. All right, Wendy, cut him loose. Yeah, maybe we better keep the young squirt tied up. Might keep him out of trouble. Heh, <laughs> leastwise we get back to town. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want some of the boys to stand by, Marshal? No, thanks. We can take care of hurting the prisoners over the county seat in the morning. Yeah, you're darn tootin'. Well, good night, Marshal. Good night, Davis, and thanks. Come on, fella. Sandy. You've got more nerve than I thought you had. Well, lots of things you never thought. You made a mistake coming back to town. Looks like we're finished. The boys at the mine are cleaned out. Claiborne's in jail. Cassidy's holding all the aces. All of the aces. And the Joker, Cleveland. With Cassidy out of the way, we won't have to worry about anybody else. Will we? No. No, we never had to before, did we? Hey, Jack. Hmm? You tell Cassidy from me that if he's half the man he thinks he is, I'll be here. Wait. I didn't think you had it in you. Well, 
Well, we kind of saved each other's necks today, didn't we, kid? Marshal, I've got a message for you. Go ahead. Blackie's back in town. Where is he? Said he'd be at the Crystal Slipper for you to come a-gun him if you felt lucky. Well, tell him I feel lucky. I'm going with you, Hoppy. I want to have a little talk with Blackie myself about my shadow. Nobody's going with me. This business I got with Blackie Felton is personal. What's the matter, you backing down? I thought you'd be out in the street gunning for Cassidy by this time. Yeah. There's more than one way of skinning a cat. Why, you yell it. I knew you didn't have the nerve to meet him face to face. Keep your mouth shut. This time it's my play. Take it easy, ma'am. I'll get the doctor. Uh, don't leave me. Doctor can't do any good now. Sure he can. You'll be all right. Too late. I've been wanting to even my score with you, Mr. Cassidy. I guess I have, haven't I? You've more than even it. Somehow you... You make me wish I'd met you ten years sooner. Just knowing you's... Made me want to do so many things I... I'd forgotten how to do. I knew you had a decent streak in you somewhere. Well, I wanted to give you a chance. I don't suppose I'll have much use for anything where I'm going. Least of all, a gold mine. See that Mary Saunders gets the crystal slipper. It's hers by rights anyway. Strange. Strange we... We, we never do the right things until... until it's too late. Something I've been wanting you to do, Mr. Cassidy. More than anything else in the world. Would it be asking too much if... if I asked you to kiss me? Figured the kid would want to be trailing back home with us. I guess it was Mary that changed his mind. 
Some women folks have a way of changing a man's mind without him even knowing it. Funny, ain't it? Yeah. Ain't it? 